As a career coach and as a committee member of Women in Mining South Africa, I have the privilege of meeting some really interesting people on a daily basis. My name is Bryony Lieber, and in this conversation, I'm interviewing Takalani Randima, the Managing Director of Shaft Sinkers, part of the United Mining Services Group. What are some of the key transition points that stand out for you? When I was at university, I would go for um, uh, vocational work. By then, it didn't feel like it's a lot because anyway, you only do it for a certain period and then you stop and then you go back to university. Mm. But by the time I finished my degree and when I entered that shaft sinking project, I was told, leave your degree at the gate. Mm. That was the first transition and the first reality because... I had to now go and clock in 12 hours with other people, not the special student that used to came to come on vacation, but now I'm part of the team. It's a bit and of a shock to the system, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes. And not only just a team who's a, a, a graduate, but you are part of the um, lowest level mm. in the in the in the in the in the mine. So that was a, a big transition to say this is the, your your reality now. So I will go and assist any person in any position. But that's great. You got exposure yes. to so many different things. I was privileged because I got exposure from HR, from engineering, from artisans. I got to work with all different um, types of artisans. Mm. I got a chance because it was a shaft singing project to start from the bank, to went to the winder house to went into the stage and also at the shelf bottom. I was um, I was an assistant on all those uh, positions. So I had to embrace the fact that I know nothing mm. about each particular activity. And I was able to learn from almost everyone in, the, in, in that shelf project. You are faced with a challenge wherein you have to, pe- to convince people. I mean, when I went to that shelf project, I was the only woman who was wearing an overall. The other ladies that were there, they were maybe doing HR or things like that. Then the first thing is I had to convince the mining crew for me to be allowed to enter the keyboard. So how did you do that? I think <laughs> I think I told myself that I belong there. Mm-hmm. That was the first decision I made. Even though sometimes I would hear the noise saying that the woman, this woman won't last in this shaft. Mm. So I just told myself, you know what, you know what you want, you have to, and uh, you have to learn from these people, so that one day they can also see that you can add value. Mm-hmm. I think that's what kept me going. I would like them to know that they need to go through the process mm-hmm. because there is no shortcuts. That's the first thing. I would like them to know that every person has something to offer. Every position that they get exposed to, it is important because later on when you are doing strategic decisions, you will need those positions or those exposure that you had to go through. It is also important to take people on your on a journey. The person who, who you got exposed to from the lowest position throughout in your career, that person is the key to your success yeah. when you are up there because they will know that, you know what, this person went through the process with us. They understand what we're going through. So and that builds trust. It builds trust. And I see it now because I'm able to recruit people who trained me. It's always nice and uplifting to get an SMS of somebody saying, I see where you are. I would like to come and work for you. Mm. Or you gave me a chance to be this position when you were manager at this project, I would like to come now and work for you so that you can see how far I've become because of the appointment that you gave me. So those are the kind of things that I get from people. That speaks to building a really strong network and strong relationships. Yes, yes. But the only way you can do that is for people to trust that Mm -hmm. you are able to be part of their team. You are able to do what they they, they, they are doing. That's, I think that's the thing that I learned at an early age in a shaft to say, these people are busy with this task, even though I had a chance not to be part of, because I would have said, you know what, 
I have my degree. Next year, I'm going to be moving to this level. Mm. But I took time to be part of the team mm. and add, not just being part of the team, add value. Yeah. That, that is a decision that I made from an early age, yes. I see a lot of young people wanting to rush through the system. Yes. And I remember when I was probably in my third or fourth year of working, realizing yeah. that if I carried on rushing through the system, I was going to miss the opportunity mm. to get my hands dirty and to mm. really learn how to do things from first yes. principles. Yes. And I see a lot of young people these days doing something once, maybe twice, mm. and then thinking that they've mastered it and that they yes. should be moving on to the next yes. thing. So I'm hearing from you that mm. there's value in repetition. Mm. And the other thing is I see it now <laughs> at the position that I'm at because every day I have to make decisions about people mm. who are somewhere underground mm. and I'm sitting in the office. I cannot rush and go and open a book for me to make a decision that must save lives yeah. or that must grow somebody's career or that must make a huge impact on our clients or on our bottom line. I think that's important also. And that requires you to know every aspect of the mind, yes. every aspect of the risks that go on yes. in a mind. Mm.